Hey guys, it's Amy. As promised, I was gonna do a video talking everything about Paris in terms of highlights, uh, traveling tips, shopping tips, and just my general impression. I also just posted my Paris vlog last week in case you guys haven't checked it out yet. I will make sure to put a link up here as well as down below. But without further ado, let me talk about Paris. We travel from London to Paris via the train. It is very convenient. It was actually a pretty comfortable ride. We were in London St. Pancras station and took the Eurostar from there to Gare du Nord. It cost us 59 US dollars for each ticket, but like I mentioned in my last London tip video, uh, make sure to check all the local uh, websites as well. What I mean is the websites usually allows you to pay in different currencies. For example, in this case, paying in Euro would be a lot cheaper, but we didn't know, so we did learn it the hard way. Our ride started at 4.30 and we arrived shortly after 8 o'clock because there were some delays along the way, so it was roughly two and a half hours plus some delays. Uh, once we arrived at the Galdenal station, we noticed that it was very very different from London and we were super aware of pickpocketers. Not that we saw any, but it just felt different. It felt like it wasn't as safe as London for some reason. I don't know why we felt that way. Some of us had to go to the washroom, so me and my brother were staying upstairs to look after the luggage and uh, two of them, uh, my husband and my sister-in-law had to go to the washroom. They were like bums passing by and just like coming over to ask for money and things like that. So we were definitely wary and always kept our bags in front of us. Uh, including your purse, backpack, whatsoever. Make sure you go to the washroom inside the train if you don't have change with you because um, the toilets inside the train station at Galzenau cost money. It, it was only like, I don't know, 80, 80 cents. We figured that it was easier to buy some metro tickets while we were already at the station, even though we didn't have to. So I think we bought a packet of 20 or was it 10? I can't remember. Uh, but it was averaging out uh, to a dollar 45 euro basically per ticket. Metros are really good in, in France. I would say it would take you from A to B from a lot of places, uh, it's quite convenient. But I would say that I prefer the Uber. It was just so much more convenient and so much more comfortable. And it was very worth it for us because it was the four of us. So whenever we took an Uber, it would range between six to 10 euros. But when you divide it by four people, it's either a euro 50 or two euro 50 per person. So it wasn't very far off from that metro ticket cost. Most of the drivers that we had were wonderful. And I think only one of them was less pleasant, but in general, I would say it's quite worth it. We were first looking at hotels uh, and they were very pricey, especially because we wanted to stay at a nicer hotel. And we figured that the, you know, around the ninth district was more reasonable and it was kind of central to everything. I mean, once you're in Paris, it's pretty central to everything anyway, but we decided to maybe try the Airbnb, save some money and just try to be living in the Paris life apartment. We didn't expect our Airbnb apartment to be very, very small. And I think in general, it would have been okay, even though it was small because the shower literally would, you know, make the floor wet everywhere. And that's, also it's connected to the to the toilet basically the toilet would get wet whenever someone showers so it wasn't the most pleasant experience in case you guys were wondering we spent 427 dollars canadian for three nights so it's very very reasonable um and the one that we stayed at if you're interested to look at it it's um at montmartre Pigalle. It's on Rue Jean-Baptiste Pigalle, so if you go on Airbnb, you should be able to look it up. Um, it's in the 9th district, and uh, the owner of the place is Valérie. So, um, like I said, it, it was okay. It was not the most fantastic place to stay. It wasn't, like, bad. It was still clean, but it was just very basic, and it was just the washroom was not as comfortable. Obviously, we were very tired, so on day two, we slept in and 
woke up at lunchtime and decided that we were gonna hit up the Louvre that was one of the attractions that for sure we wanted to see took the uber it cost us about nine euros so it was very convenient very fast and would otherwise have taken us much longer with all the connections and with metro and stuff so i i really totally recommend the uber nevertheless we arrived in the area just grabbed some lunch at a local cafe called stubby it was actually a german cafe we didn't actually know the place but we arrived in the area looked up on yelp and just saw that that was a decent cafe i definitely highly recommend the Louvre. i was glad that we were able to stay we only stayed about two two and a half three hours um, inside it so you basically have to pick and choose the places or the 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 exhibitions that you want to see the reason why i also recommend the louvre because i know a lot of people skip it which is also fine uh, is because i also had the chance to go to the vatican and as much as i loved it as well the vatican is not in france obviously it's in italy i just felt that the louvre was so much more relaxed in comparison to the vatican and i really enjoyed the experience i mean the arts are different of course and you're looking at different exhibitions but the point was that the experience was quite nice as well so I wasn't as stressed out and everything so that also added to the experience try to book your attractions on uh, in advance if you can online or whatnot um, sometimes you just don't know whether you will do the attraction for sure or not so for the Louvre we didn't book it and we just lined up it took us about maybe 20 to half an hour um, 20 minutes to half an hour to get our tickets which wasn't too too bad so after the Louvre we just uh, tried to follow the guidebook and then went to all the nearest attractions in the area so we went to Saint Chapelle and then we didn't go in in any of those other attractions we just decided we would take pictures and not go inside it was only 10 euros to go inside it and i heard that it was very very nice but if you have the chance definitely check it out but we we just wanted to make sure to visit as many attractions as possible but not necessarily go into all of them uh right next to it there was also the palais de justice which is their court it was very nice on the outside just take a couple pictures and then walked a little bit further to the cathedrale Notre Dame de Paris, which is the Notre Dame. Um, that one was also spectacular from the outside. We took another Uber from there to a restaurant that we knew we were gonna hit up. I think it is a chain. It's called Pedra Alta and it is a Portuguese restaurant. The food was amazing. The portions were so humongous. Definitely enough to share. Definitely try it. Uh, it's not French food, but we loved it and it was really, really good. <laughs> We uh, had booked a lunch at a really nice local Michelin rated din um, restaurant in Paris called Hamid. We just wanted to try it out and make sure we hit up as much attractions later on as well during the day. So we knew that by booking um, a meal there for lunch, it would be a lot more uh, affordable and also still really good. And it was and the portions was was bigger than I expected. We had a three course meal and it was amazing. Because it was raining on that day, uh, we decided that we, we would just try to stay indoors as much as possible. So we knew that I wanted to visit some of the, um, you know, stores, luxury stores. And for sure, the Galerie Lafayette was one of the attractions I wanted to see. I always hear about it. I always wanted to see how it looked like inside. And I was glad that we did. Right across the street from it, there's another Galerie Lafayette, but it's the food market. So you can, you know, get your eclair and your macaron and like all these yummy French baguette and coffee and whatnot. Not very far from it is Rue Cambon. I knew that uh, it was walking distance from the original Chanel, Coco Chanel apartment and boutique. So we went there. I was able to go inside as well and take a, take a look around. Um, one of you asked me uh, if in Paris, usually if you have to line up to buy things at Chanel, which the answer is yes, in general, you do have to line up to get service basically you need an essay to help you out that is also the reason why i didn't buy anything there like i i just visited the store i walked around inside to see the layout and i saw the stairs the famous stairs if you're really serious about looking for something or buying something 
try to go early in the morning to avoid to avoid the lines uh, I mean there will be lines anyway but maybe the lines will be shorter I hope and regardless even if you're going throughout the day not necessarily in the morning just just expect to line up because that's usually how I felt like it was inside the Galerie Lafayette there were lines at Chanel there were lines at LV the lines were actually pretty long as well um, but in the Galerie Lafayette, even though there were lines downstairs, because there's several floors, and then so we went to the second and third and etc. floors, and on the second floor, the Chanel didn't have a line at all, so I went in and I looked at some jewelry. Either people just didn't work their way up to the second floor yet, or maybe most of the bags I purchased in the first floor. I'm not sure exactly. I'm gonna have a separate video in terms of a VAT refund process and how much I got back and all that because I shopped at different countries throughout Europe and I received my refund finally so I'm gonna make a separate video for that. In general for Paris, uh, the refund percentage is 12 for credit cards uh, and then I think the only exception is 13% for Chanel. Pretty much after that, we were all pretty tired and still had a few hours to kill until our next attraction, which is the Eiffel Tower. So we just went to a local pub again and grabbed dinner and then uh, tried to find a coffee shop. But for some reason, all the coffee shops were closed. So we ended up at McDonald's and had coffee there and ice cream, but it was terrible. Apparently, the coffee wasn't good and the ice cream wasn't good. <laughs> Stick to the French food, definitely. Um, but anyway, it was still a good place to just, you know, wait out the rain and just hang out until uh, the time we were supposed to go to the Eiffel Tower because I booked our tickets to go up the Eiffel Tower at 11 p.m. I highly recommend uh, to book online in advance for the Eiffel Tower because you would be surprised at how well in advance the tower times get booked up. Now, don't worry if you don't have a ticket online um, because you can still go there in person and line up and get tickets but it would just take you a much longer time to get your tickets and with all the traveling and walking around and all that and just being out and about, you would be so tired already so I was really really glad that I was able still to get tickets but the only ticket available were on that day our last day and at 11 p.m they're pretty strict with timing they won't really let you go up early so even if you were not allowed to go up the tower uh, before your allotted time you can still go through the security first and once you're in the secure area you can take pictures and just walk around go to the gift shop and whatnot there are four towers to choose from where you can go up the tower i mean four sides north south uh, east west um pretty sure all of them are good but we were told that the north side is the prettiest so we definitely went to the north side but if you were there and you see that another tower had a much shorter line i would still recommend you go there because i don't think that you would miss that much to be very honest if you didn't go to uh, if you didn't go to the north side it's just you basically just see a lot of the metal structure the tickets that i booked online were to go to the second floor but don't worry, once you're in the tower, you're also able to purchase upgrade tickets from there. So um, we were able to go to the top floor anyway because we just purchased them there on the spot once we were on the second floor. The tickets were 11 euros to go up to the second and then 6 extra euros to go up to the top. So even if you booked online, it would be the same price. You would either be able to book only up to the second floor or up to the top. Uh, they would charge you accordingly. On our fourth and final day, uh, it was a travel day. Bright and early, our train uh, was supposed to depart from Gare de Lyon at 10 o'clock, arriving in Barcelona at 4.30 local time. There was no time change from Barcelona to, uh, from Paris to Barcelona. So the train ride was about six hours. We were also very surprised that there was no uh, security to go through before going on your train which is very strange and very different from you know London to Paris you definitely had to go through customs and security in London um, it was okay but it was just very different so keep in mind that it's very different every city you go to um, even down to the train stations and how it works out like it felt a little bit chaotic we didn't even have a 
gate number until pretty late and then once the gate was announced everyone was rushing to the <laughs> to the gate and the, the, their trains and stuff like that but it all worked out it was just um it was always a little bit more chaotic and actually it was kind of like that in london too they didn't have they didn't announce the gates or the doors until like 20 or 30 minutes before the departure which for me the highlight of paris is everything <laughs> I don't know, the Uber, Uber rides were highlights for me. Um, the food, um, the attractions, so many places to shop, even though that's something that I didn't do as much in Paris. Um, Paris is just such a beautiful city. I would love to go back already. Make sure that you have your passport when you go shopping. Uh, definitely expect lineups and go early and plan out your, you know, your stores that you want to go to if you can and have a wish list. Um, definitely, definitely try to get data or, you know, get a data plan or like a local SIM card if you can because it will be super helpful. I highly recommend do Uber. Make sure you set up your Uber app in advance if you haven't used it ever before. You can even set up to have your tips paid off of your app uh, because yeah, so you won't have to take out your money or anything. You know, everything is coming from your credit card directly. You know in advance how much your ride would cost. Beware of pickpocketers in general. I mean, I felt like Paris was pretty safe already. A lot of people were carrying nice bags and all and it didn't feel dangerous at all, but just I'm sure that if you were not careful, if you're not looking, that you would be a target. So definitely just be aware of your surroundings. Last but not least, try to pre-book as many attractions as you can. And if you book any train tickets or any things like that, uh, and which allows you to either pay by euro or lo your local currency, definitely try to see which one is more uh, cheaper because sometimes just by switching the currency will allow you to save a little bit which is very helpful um, try to remember that I know that I forget myself as well but uh, when I did remember I definitely saved you know I, I saved you know 30 bucks 40 bucks and it was worth it I think that's all I can think of I've already went through all the notes that I have but if I did forget anything or if I didn't mention anything that you're curious about let me know down below in the comments and I'll try to answer as best as I can uh, so yeah, if you're traveling to Paris, safe travels and I think you'll love it. I, I absolutely love Paris. I definitely want to go back already. Um, so the next vlog will be Barcelona because that's where we're going next and uh, I'll try to I'll try to edit it soon but it takes so long. And if you guys are interested in another sort of Barcelona highlights plus tips, sort of video let me know down below as well or give this video a thumbs up and i'll know to do it um so yeah i guess that's it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it again my name is amy if you haven't subscribed to my channel already but would like to do so i would love to have you here and uh, i will talk to you again very soon bye